Welcome, everybody. We are excited that you're here with us today. Um, I think we can go ahead and get uh, get started. Let me do a quick introduction. My name is David Garcia. Uh, I am part of the product marketing team here at Emnify. My co-host for this morning is Mr. Joseph Johnson. He is part of our technical support team. He's going to be in the driver's seat during this presentation. I'll be here to facilitate and answer and uh, with the questions that we have during the presentation. The purpose of this webinar, ladies and gentlemen, is to provide you a 30-minute introduction to help you get started or reacquainted with our platform. If you like what you see, and if you'd like a more uh, in-depth walkthrough, or maybe you have some more technical questions, we can absolutely schedule a deeper dive based on your needs with any of your account executives upon your request. Also, we plan to do a lot more of these webinars in the future with a lot more detailed information about use cases and applications. So at the end of this presentation, we're gonna conclude with a poll. Now, if you stick around to the very end of the poll, God bless you, thank you very much. <laughs> but also, we would love to hear your feedback. If there's anything you'd like us to do a deeper dive on, uh, you know, to just provide additional context for in the next coming weeks or months, we would love to hear from you. Now, let's go over today's agenda. So the topics that we're gonna be covering today are provisioning of your SIM and your devices. So a lot of you that may be on the call today may be struggling with this. So let's show you how we can actually complement your operations with our platform for your provision of your SIMs and devices. Then we're gonna cover device policies. So we're gonna show you how you can actually define device behavior like data consumption or even rate plans and network access. And then we're gonna cover bulk actions. So what are some of the automations that you can actually apply to your workflow through our platform not only through the through the actual portal, but also our API and our no-code options. And then the next thing is uh, integration. So you may or may not know that much about Emnify, but let me tell you, we are a cloud-native distributed core IoT provider for telco communications. The benefit for you is that we can actually do integration of real-time data directly into your existing platforms for network health and other device status information. Then we're going to cover into reports, which is going to show you some really, uh, really useful reporting capabilities that you can run on our portal. And then lastly, we're going to do system status and support. Support is often many times a last minute consideration, but I want you to really understand how important the support is for IoT applications and why having an IoT specific partner that does nothing but eat and breathe and sleep IoT can do for you. So with that, I will now go ahead and hand it over to my co-host, Joseph Johnson. Joseph, the floor is all yours. Take it away, buddy. Thank you very much. I'll try to get ah, all that covered. Brother, we can't hear you. Uh, I'll try to get all that covered as uh, soon as possible. Still no sound. And back again. Mm. I think it might be your speaker. <laughs> so, uh, oh, if yeah, you see, there we go. Um, yeah, I'll try to uh, cover all that. Uh, if there are some uh, simple clarifications, please post them in the chat and uh, David will uh, relay them. It's a bit more uh, in depth. Uh, for sure, I could talk in length about each of these uh, topics, uh, but I'll try to cover and, uh, most topics and give you a rounded view from start to finish. So to begin with, uh, let me actually show you our portal, uh, the real live portal. And I hope I don't suffer from any uh, demo effects. <laughs> so when you uh, you can sign up for an account in our portal, and you can order uh, demo SIM cards. And uh, when you log in, uh, it'll look like uh, this page. Of course, for uh, security is uh, paramount to us. So we also enable uh, two-factor authentication if you wish. So I always uh, enable this, and I want to show you that it's quick and easy. I'm using the Google Authenticator on my phone to plug this in. We also have uh, Azure uh, integration. Uh, well, well, what? This is actually a, a good <laughs> demo effect, but don't worry, I have another account if there's any problems. So this is important because two-factor authentication is definitely a need of a lot of our customers for security purposes. So I'm glad that we actually showcase that. Exactly, exactly. So now you can see I'm into the portal and I want to help people to understand where do I go from here? So let's say you got one of the uh, SIM cards either from one of our representatives or you order SIM cards uh, using the uh, order uh, button. You, will, uh, you can choose a specific uh, SIM card type. 
these are the physical form factors. Uh, so we have the, the cards to go into standard devices, or we also have the embedded uh, chips to be built into the device right in the factory. But let's go back to basics. What we try to do is help you uh, make it easy to get started. So the process is uh, get your account. We include a free balance for you to evaluate our SIMs, and we're happy to facilitate more testing. Getting the physical uh, SIM cards. And then the next, stage, uh, the next steps that I'll show you are putting the SIMs on our system, creating a device that will use the SIM card, and getting that device online. I'll use an example of a device that I have here. So let's get started. The uh, SIM cards, uh, we put these in a repository, an inventory of SIM cards. So to get them in, we, put, we can put them in uh, one by one, like an example here, or we can put them in in bulk. To make this easy, we have a simple code that we have on the uh, card, and we can do this via our user interface, or we can do this via API so that you can automate it, your processes. So right now I'm putting in the SIM card, but most importantly, I'm not causing any bills for myself. This is a state of the SIM card that it is registered, but it's not uh, doing anything that will cost me money. And this is really important for uh, device deployment, development, um, so that you only want to use the devices when they actually will be used in the field. And is that also the same for the batch when you do it, the full box of registered SIMs? No Absolutely. It until they're actually used, correct? If uh, I'll pay for the physical plastic, we don't want people to to waste plastic. <laughs> so the uh, the one-off cost, but the, these are no uh, not costing monthly fees. Thank you, Joseph. So now the next thing is I want to create a device. So let's say this is a, a GPS tracker for your car. Maybe your insurance company is going to uh, track the car to make sure you're not speeding or something like that. Um, so every device should have a name and it's good to give it a, a, a logical name. Uh, what would what will we call your car? Uh, let's call it uh, S-T-A-R-L-R-D. Okay, okay. Uh, L-O-R-D, sorry. Okay. And I can add uh, tags. The tags will become useful when I want to organize my fleet of devices using meaningful tags. So what is this uh, Star Lord? That's a uh, marble. That's a... Uh... Okay, marble. <laughs> okay. I was it actually was intending about uh, using an example of a car, maybe like a Ford or something like that. Yeah, Ford. The, these tags are optional. These are useful and these can be added later. Yes. Uh, likewise, with service policies, we can start off with uh, default policies, uh, automatic IP address, and when I click create device, now is the choice whether I want to immediately have this device ready to go online and uh, pay for it for this month, or I can leave it disabled and activate it later. So uh, I think I'll go ahead and uh, activate it. And now what we're uh, pointing out here this is a reminder, I need to do a setting on the device. Uh, a lot of operators uh, are known to device manufacturers like Samsung or Apple, uh, and they automatically put in the APN. Uh, for us, we use EM as the APN. In your uh, documentation for your device, there's guaranteed to be a place where you can specify the APN. Uh, sometimes you might need to enable roaming, like uh, on smartphones, there's usually enable or disable roaming uh, to prevent uh, excessive cost. And we have other mechanisms to do that. We give you a link to a page that tells you how to, to do this. For example, I will do this on a Tel, Tel Tonica device. And there are some examples here. Maybe it's using the user interface or maybe it's using an SMS. So let's say I want to uh, do this via SMS. I can uh, click acknowledge the, the button here. And you can see there's your Starlord device. Now we have two devices in our account with different tags. It's enabled, but it doesn't have a connection yet. Logically, the APN hasn't been set. How do I set it? Well, I can uh, jump straight into the SMS console here. 
or I, in the details page, I can also jump into the SMS console here. Now, Teltonica, they have a nice uh, system where you can actually send an SMS message to the device, uh, and it goes out like this. So this is really useful because you may have devices that are out in the field and you have multiple ways of being able to set the APNs and being able to set up the communication, configure them out in the field through an SMS and a lot of different options. The best part is like, like Joseph is showing us now, you can also do it through the portal. Mm -hmm. And then the device will uh, take its time to uh, attach to a network and uh, connect. So I actually have a device that's uh, already uh, connected and sending and receiving data because this is say just getting the basic up and running it'll i have also the uh more advanced uh, options with this uh test account we give you a prepaid balance and you can use this across all your uh, sim cards but this is just to get started and evaluated more interestingly we have uh data pools so I will go back to a uh, demonstration account that we have with more meaningful uh, devices. One moment. So this is what a real account looks like when we've got lots of devices, lots of events, data coming in from all around the world, data traffic. At a glance, this page is designed to give you an idea of what's happening in your system. To get your first device online and to understand what it's doing, I tend to, uh, we use this page, Connected Devices, the most. So I have used uh, Tag uh, JJ to organize the devices that I'm using to show you today. And I will go into uh, this Raspberry Pi. And you can see we're already using data. Let's say I, it wasn't using data. How do I uh, troubleshoot it? How do I see what's happening? We have events. We want to give you full transparency into what's happening in the network, uh, where it's happening, how it's happening, and what we always expect from a device is for it to send uh, the lo uh, update location. So it's getting on the network, it's getting on the Vodafone network, uh, creating, a, a registering on this uh, internal network node. You don't need to worry about this. The main thing is that you see it. And most importantly, creating a session a data session using uh, 2G or 3G or 4G. When we see that those three of the of, uh, events, we know now that the device should be able to send and receive data. And pray presto, the device is sending GPS data to the uh, application server. Sounds good. Sounds very good, Joseph. It looks like you can also export information on there. Is this is this type of event information useful for troubleshooting or diagnostics? Absolutely. So uh, whenever we do have uh, errors or issues, we can uh, export this here and we can also export the data via data streamer to another uh, system of your choice. So now we get into the uh, interesting part that makes it a little bit different from your ordinary personal SIM. We want to uh, control costs. We want to have visibility every day what data is being used. So we're providing the data approximately every 15 minutes and we can check the statistics uh, for the last hour, the current month, the last month, either here in a graph format, uh, here in a uh, tabular format, and also via API. Part of our system is uh, the API. In fact, it's not just part of our system. The core, one of the core parts of our system is to use the API so that you don't need to log into our portal. We want you to uh, build your uh, business or have it just working in the background. So when you want to check, you can pull it out automatically, or you can go in here and see it at a glance. If the device is uh, using uh, 2G, it'll show the location. Uh, and 4G, uh, this is being added. Uh, sometimes it doesn't show the location, sometimes it does. Uh, but we always provide you with detailed information about where the device is coming online. So for example, uh, telling you the uh, the network code, the country code, uh, what uh, location area code, and uh, cell ID is is being is being used. So the, getting the device online is uh, quite easy, and then there's a little bit of uh, device troubleshooting where necessary, 
and we have our support uh, team who can help you work through the most common issues. Also, we have a knowledge base and a community so that you can share ideas and uh, tips. Excellent, Joseph. Looks like there's also some some policies maybe that we can we can set here as well. I'm looking at um, service and coverage policies as well as the IMEI log. So you can do a lot from this very very quick at a glance information for a detailed information on the specific device. Looks like exactly. So cost control is one of the most important things uh, when you're managing a fleet of devices. So the first thing is uh, if you have your uh, SIM card in a GPS tracker. Mm -hmm. somebody's going to try and put it into a personal device. We have a tool to prevent that by locking it to the equipment identifier of the GPS tracker. So it's uh, really great to uh, turn on the IMEI lock for devices. Even if you don't know what the device is on uh, in advance, it'll automatically lock to the first uh, identifier. So once you actually insert the SIM in the device, it pulls information that identifies it? Is that the way that it works? Actually. Exactly. And even if you don't have this on, or if, let's say your device has a, a software issue, a bug, or uh, then we have the ability to limit the amount of data that it can use. So the uh, every device uh, uses pay as you go or a, a pool of data, and we of course every device will not use the exact same amount of data. That's why a pool is so useful. Some can use a bit more, some can use a bit less. We might say 10 megabytes or five megabytes of data for your GPS tracker but it should definitely not go above 20 megabytes. And you can see here, we have limited it to 20 megabytes of data for, per month. And if you go over that, it'll uh, stop the data being used and it will trigger an event. And you can uh, send that event via our data streamer to a, another application so that you can take action, so that your support team, so that your uh, investigation team can take action. This is kind of the difference again between a standard off-the-shelf SIM and a, an IoT connectivity platform. That's a great point because what you're really doing is, A, you're locking it to a device to prevent misuse. And if it does happen to be misused, maybe it isn't locked down, you still are gonna prevent somebody using a lot of data because you cap it and then you get notified. So you get visibility, you can be proactive about making sure that you don't get overages and you can also secure the device with mitigation through the IMEI lock. So that's great. Thank you, Joseph. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'll cover the uh, SMS later in the service policies, but just to explain, my, my Raspberry Pi is not going to be sending or receiving SMS, so it's easy to just to, uh, disable it. Um, you can see that I'm using Vodafone Germany, and our platform allows multiple networks in multiple countries to give mm -hmm. you that, that peace of mind that when uh, Vodafone's not available, that I can use O2 or Telecom. I don't even need to think about the network. I shouldn't think about the network. Uh, it'll pick the network that uh, will allow it to send and receive data. The uh, blocked operators, this is a, an interesting that you're probably wondering about. And that's usually the case when uh, we'll say one of the networks has a problem. Let's say Vodafone Germany has a problem. Our support team is monitoring this and they will uh, have an incident and they will open a ticket and say, David, there's a problem with Vodafone. Let's block Vodafone for the duration of this incident. Uh, let's reset the connectivity so that the device comes back online and we will uh, stop it from uh, opening data with Vodafone. We will make it choose one of the other networks. And this is exactly how we keep people online even when there's network problems in various countries. And this happens all the time around the world. Operators have issues. It's the nature of the game. That's actually a really good point. And by the way, when I spoke earlier about the difference between an IoT specific company is this. This is a perfect example, like Joseph mentioned. We're making sure that that stuff is online. Failover is very important because information and access is very critical. So this is one thing I'd love to highlight for sure. Thank you, Joseph. Mm -hmm. uh, we're as we're an API based company. Everything has an identifier. The device has an identifier. The SIM has an identifier. The policies have identifiers. Uh, this is the identifier we give the device, and every device also gets a static private IP address so that if you're connecting to an application server in AWS or behind a VPN, you can reach this IP address. That's super helpful so you, that you know data from your tracker is this specific address, 
And if you have remote login possibility, you can use this IP to log in directly, to do firmware updates, to do remote uh, troubleshooting, um, keep the device up to date, because you know, the first firmware is never the perfect firmware. That's right. So in, when I was doing the example device, I chose the default policies. And I will uh, go to another area to explain what these other service and coverage policies are. Here, this is information about the SIM card that is being used. Um, every, devi every device uses a SIM card. So let's say, for example, your car, it's uh, your, uh, yeah, what is it called again? Sith Lord? Star, or... Star Lord. <laughs> Vanity plate. Star man. Lord. Yeah. So let's say Star Lord gets replaced by uh, Angel. <laughs> uh, you can create a new device called Angel. You can release the SIM here and then you can associate it with Angel. And you can have the history of Star Lord uh, under the Star Lord device and the history of Angel under the Angel device. If you wanted to do the other way around, you just want to rename it, you can you rename your device, turn off the lock, uh, let it uh, use the, the new device, and come back and turn on the lock again later. Either way, you're covered uh, and you're flexible, you have flexibility, you're not locked in. Also our, also, our APN is the same regardless of whether you're using standard internet connectivity or a VPN connectivity to your backend. So you put it out there, it's ready to go. So what's, do we have any question? Uh, it looks, uh, here we go. Looks like we do have a quick question. So it does those actions by sending an SMS. So they had a question about the SMS. So it does those actions by sending SMS to the device. Yes, that is a question from Sue Heil. Uh, Sue Heil Sobrate, Sobrati, I hope I didn't butcher your name, sir. But yeah, his question was, so it does those actions by sending an SMS to the device. Mm -hmm. So the APN setting on your device is a device specific. Uh, so the example device I, hear, I have here from Teutonica allows APN setting via SMS. It allows APN setting via the user interface and uh, other uh, devices, they might do it via command, uh, via configuration file. So you have to uh, look into the documentation for your device how is the APN set? And actually, this takes us to the very next point, which is bulk actions. So this was a really good overview of, of how much you can actually do, how much control you have over an individual device. But what about if you have to do that across multiple devices, which is very common for IoT? Is that correct, Joseph? Absolutely. Uh, so we can do bulk actions in the portal here, like I'll demonstrate. Also uh, via API, using nice tools like uh, Postman, for example, or your own developed uh, uh, API uh, soft, uh, software. So, uh, API software, <laughs> software <laughs> using our API. Here, uh, we can uh, filter based on the uh, tags. You can see I'm showing uh, four of the devices here with the JJ tag, and I can uh, select multiple devices here using this little button at the top, or I can do them uh, one by one, whatever you prefer. Then bulk actions appear along the top and down the side. So for example, if I want to uh, send an S a configuration SMS uh, to devices, whatever per, uh, command it might be, get information, set APN, uh, do something specific, I can, do, I can say send multiple SMSs by the portal. And we also have a nice guide on our uh, documentation uh, page about how to do this via API. Sounds so that's good. great because if you're having issues, let's say, where you need to reset the connectivity, maybe you have a batch of devices that are located somewhere. Maybe, like you said, a common scenario, maybe there's an issue with the network locally. This is a fantastic way to go ahead and reset those devices and make sure they come back online. So a lot Absolutely. of trouble opportunity for people that need that. Mm -hmm. But I promised to talk about uh, device policies that we sell and explain a little bit about that. So it's a bit more uh, in depth. So I minimize this to make it easy, and I'll talk about uh, service policies first. This is what the device can and cannot do. So if I was to create a new service policy uh, beyond the default one, I can give it a name, JJ, service policy. Um, I can add a description. And the most, most common things I like to do, and I would recommend doing, are setting uh, usage limits uh, so that the device 
is limited to a, a certain amount of data per month. This is a great safety net so that even if you're not uh, checking the usage by portal or API, there's an automatic stop. Um, also here, this is where I can turn on uh, SMSs. MO is uh, when the device is sending. The SMS is originating from the device. MT is for when the device, for when the SMS is terminating on the device. So I'm sending a message to the device. So if I want to configure my APN by SMS, if it's allowed, supported by the device, I will turn this on. And if the device is going to respond, I'll turn this on. And likewise here, we can set uh, limits. The interface for the SMS is uh, described down here. Uh, we have uh, more advanced options. I leave it at the web portal as a standard. And if we're connecting to uh, private networks, let's say uh, we want to have a DNS server that limits your device to only talk to particular applications, uh, or you want to do use a different DNS server, this is where we can configure this here. Sounds good. So that's, that's very useful, I'm sure, for uh, being able to also lock down and secure and mitigate your devices. So, mm -hmm. and I we can have, have multiple. We can have multiple policies. So we can use uh, one policy for a GPS tracker, one for a, a CCTV camera, one for a fleet of Raspberry Pis, and uh, we can add the service policy to devices and we can change the service policy as we need. It's just a click of a button or a call of an API. We have one question. I'm not sure if maybe there's something we, we can we can do for follow-up. Um, there's a gentleman, he, Juan Arenas, he wants to know if they could assign or activate an eSIM on GPS devices in order to not have them insert the normal SIM and save on technical services. Mm -hmm. So they're actually uh, consumer eSIMs and there are end-to-end uh, eSIMs. And that's, uh, there are actually a, a lot of uh, details on that. So it's really a, a topic that we should uh, cover in another webinar. Um, we'll add so, that to yeah. the list of topics that people are definitely interested in, which is eSIM. Yeah. Even sure. the word eSIM is often used for that Perfect. embedded SIM that's built into the device. Excellent. But you know what, Juan, we will get back to your question for sure. Thank you for, for asking, though. Mm -hmm. Moving on, my friend. Um, the next thing is, let's say, uh, coverage policies. So the pay-as-you-go and the evaluation will let you evaluate pretty much all around the world. But let's say your GPS tracker is going to be used in the, uh, the Americas. You're going to drive up and down Canada, Mexico. Um, but I don't want you to take it to, I don't know, pick a, pick a country. <laughs> let's say, let's pick a random uh, country. I do, uh, Brazil's in the Americas. Let's say I don't want you bringing your car to uh, Iceland. Sorry to pick on Iceland. Uh, <laughs> I can have the uh, Americas profile and uh, devices with this uh, uh, coverage profile, they will only work with networks here. If I do want to uh, allow Iceland, uh, let's say I have to uh, switch on uh, a different uh, area. Uh, so I can switch on here, the rest of Europe, or I can switch on uh, global policy, and now you can see it's lighting up, so I can you can use the devices in other areas. The tariffs as well. This is a very commercial thing about you know choosing the right tariff for your needs. And uh, a standard, you have one tariff. If you have like, more advanced plans, like the business plan or the enterprise plan, you can have multiple tariffs. So you can have uh, a coverage policy for the devices using in the Americas, uh, one for U.S. only. Uh, one for Europe, and this makes it uh, more cost effective. And by the way, from American friends, tariffs just simply means rate plans. Oh, yes, yes. yes, yes. And when I say operators, I also mean carriers. <laughs> Correct. And then also the last thing is, so that's that means that you can actually do that by, by different SIMs that are part of the same distribution, right? So you can actually have different rate plans for different SIM, groups of SIM devices that may be deployed elsewhere. Excellent. And Changing it, like we said, is the uh, bulk actions. Oh, I can change beautiful. the coverage policy, the service policy, uh, very, very quickly. Um, also, this is, uh, we say the actual physical uh, change uh, will uh, be applied immediately. Uh, but for billing, it's more like a month, month by month. So it's not meant to be day by day. 
So just to, I'll throw this in as well, because this is very interesting. And I just want to make sure people understand, you can literally have devices grouped by tags. Maybe it's building A, all of the devices that are in building A, they may be in Brazil. You can just go ahead and set, select all of those and you can apply rate different rate plans just for those specific devices. So you have a lot of control, a lot of flexibility, and it's all very easy to do from one single place. So I just want to highlight that for people. I want to show you a couple of uh, things as well. Uh, mm -hmm. So, for example, what I showed you was the SIM going to the issue, going to issued state where there's no uh, fee for it. It's ready to be associated with the device. Then we activated it immediately, and now it's it's uh, ready to use data. It's activated. It's contributing to a data pool. If I'm using data pools, and there's a, a, a price per month for that activated SIM card. You can move it into suspended mode. Uh, again, the bulk actions move things into suspended so that you're not charged for the uh, the SIM card month by month. Uh, maybe it's a it's a summer vehicle. It's your caravan, and during the winter you don't you don't want to use it, so you don't need to have it activated over the winter. We also have a new feature, the factory test mode. Uh, with our API, it can be put into factory test. So let's say uh, you're prov you're a company providing GPS uh, trackers. You put the SIM card into the device in the factory, wherever the factory might be. Uh, send the configuration SMS. We allow 100 kilobytes of data and about 10, S uh, 10 SMSs so that you can configure it. And then the device goes on its merry way via ship, via plane. So it might be a month or two months later before the device is actually switched on in the vehicle. And it's only at that point where it crosses the threshold that it moves to activate it. And it does it automatically. You don't, you don't need to think about it. You put it into the box. It goes to the, uh, to the mechanic. Once it's installed, gets power, starts using data, starts sending GPS, it'll automatically move into activate it. Really, really helpful. Another theoretical thing is, let's say you're, divide, you're doing this for a fleet of cars all around the world. Uh, one of the options was the uh, breakout region, and we had automatic breakout region. Now, what does that mean? If you're using a, uh, a carrier in the US, you'll see that all the data is going back to that carrier's home country. But your, your uh, operations are actually regional. So you have uh, data for cars in the US staying in the US, cars for Europe staying in Europe. I mean, if you talk to European data regulator, <laughs> regulators, they, won't, they don't want the data cross crossing the world. Our platform enables you to keep the data local because our data plane is distributed on the cloud across all the regions of the world. And we can uh, allow it to be done automatically, so you don't need to think about it, or you can, spe you can specify service policy by service policy, where should the data go? Okay. Excellent. This is the, uh, this is the standard thing here, where you're going uh, automatically out through to the public internet, but even nicer, as I mentioned, this private IP address is available if we connect it to your IPsec tunnel. This is what we call an integration. And I'll show you the integration page when you come back in a moment. But this is what we're doing. We're uh, creating a connection, a secure connection from your private network to our operator network as a trusted uh, domain and straight into uh, your device if the device allows remote connectivity. This is how you can have a connection from application server to device and vice versa. This is really quick to set up with uh, on our platform and we encourage people to evaluate this as well. It's also more secure. Way more secure. Like there was the example of uh, devices that were sending data over the internet with a standard password. And uh, anybody who saw the data going back and forth, they, could, they, they knew what devices to target. Here, we can keep things uh, internally. Also, you can have your own DNS inside your private network. Uh, for troubleshooting, we also have a, a lightweight uh, version. And this is uh, you putting a VPN uh, client. You could put this on your MacBook. And then you can uh, use the IP address of the device to connect to it, to check it, maybe to pull out logs or whatever it might be. So those were the, the topics that I wanted to cover there. Excellent. Good. Excellent. Any questions there? Uh, no, looks like we are good on questions right now. Good. 
automation uh, let me just uh, show you this uh, part when you want to do things like that caravan example create an action at a particular calendar date uh, there are no code uh, tools like Zapier and we have some examples of how to do this so that on, when a particular calendar event is triggered it calls our API and does something like this this deactivate the device and then you might have another calendar event to activate it again in the spring. A really nice tool. Um, we don't have time to show this in depth here, mm -hmm. but we can cover the other uh, integrations. Uh, what I just showed you was the secure connection uh, to AWS. We have a uh, small amount of data that you need to put in, and it's automatically provisioned on our side, so you can be up and running in the in this afternoon already. And what type of data can they see? Just to give an example, is it everything that we've been walking through on our portal so far? Is that all easily available through the integration? Uh, the events, uh, the events of ev that every device is sending, what network it's logging on to, how much data it's using. This is where we can put, we can give this to you via data stream. In our portal, we show the most recent ones, uh, but you can also have everything being put into an, an S3 bucket. And you can uh, you can focus on the uh, usage data, but you can, and or and or the uh, events. As you can see, we have multiple data streams putting out data there. And you might ask yourself, why is this actually uh, useful? Well, here's an example of a data dog uh, with the uh, usage events, and you can see here at a glance, I can see who's the big data consumer. And you can pick the tool of your choice. Maybe you prefer Make, maybe you prefer AWS, and you can actually uh, do things like uh, create links to, to see what device it is. Mm -hmm. So I can quickly troubleshoot and focus in on who's using the most data. This is very powerful, especially if you handle the connectivity for a lot of clients to be able to manage your client accounts and be able to provide them insights into how their accounts are doing and just to see if there's anomalies. It's very useful for a lot of purposes, but having this cloud native platform means that you can integrate not only for yourself, but also for the customers you serve. And then the uh, application tokens. This is really helpful uh, because API is part of our DNA. So you can uh, use a tool like Swagger to understand all the APIs that we have available. Listing SIM cards, listing devices. Here in the API, we call them endpoints. And you can create a, an application token at the click of a button and uh, uh, use that to have a session token. And then immediately you can uh, query our platform and your account directly from this page to help you uh, prototype and validate your uh, API calls straight away. That's awesome. That's a very extensive library. Anybody who knows about development is definitely going to appreciate all the work that went into those resources. Just to explain as well, for completeness, every device uh, has a private IP address and uh, it's just housekeeping to add it an additional range whenever it's needed. Sounds good. Shall now I move on to the next topic? Yes, please. Let's move on to reports. Let's show these people the reporting capabilities that they have at their fingertips with our platform, my friend. Absolutely. So uh, first and foremost, data usage. Everybody wants to know the data usage. Uh, this is the equivalent of the uh, API. Um, yes. We also give you some uh, pre-made reports using our uh, reporting backend. Uh, so for example, the, the usage per device, and you can uh, download this report using uh, this download data uh, button over here. Um, maybe you also want to check you know, the SIMs, what the status of SIMs, how many are activated, how many are suspended, how many are in factory test mode, etc. So we've got a nice amount of data here. Um, also, uh, you will probably want to know what the, the rest of this portal is about. So for example, up here, we have a direct link to our API documentation. We have a direct link to our uh, system status to understand what's happening in the world, what operators are having problem, and what we're doing about it, of course, most importantly. <laughs> Uh, we have the direct link to the uh, uh, ticket system. So when you click here, you can open a ticket with just uh, one or two fields to fill in. It's really easy. Uh, if you have feedback, 
that we have a, a, a system to uh, for you to list your issues or to upvote uh, requests that other people have made. There are some nice uh, news here from us, usually good news, but also information about uh, 2G and 3G uh, sunsets, so when operators are going to switch off uh, 2G and 3G. We have uh, information about employees. Uh, so for example, if you want to invite somebody to join you in your account, uh, you can click here and uh, add employees. That's actually very useful, especially when you're talking about giving access to people that are gonna be managing the accounts if you're an administrator. Mm -hmm. And not to forget, uh, we, have, we can uh, use single sign-on as your AD so that it'll, uh, it's seamlessly integrated with your enterprise login system and security policies. I think I've, I could talk for Ireland, but I think it's, uh, I have to, uh, you know, call us a halt there. And actually, I would love to, you know, explain in, in more depth and detail to people about, you know, how the system works and how it can be useful in their particular use case. But yeah, I have to um, stop myself. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was an excellent overview. I think maybe the last thing we want to talk about is maybe just the support. I think that would be really important for, for, the audience to understand, like like I mentioned in the uh, the top of the introduction for this webinar, that's one of the big distinguishing uh, benefits with having an IoT specific type of a tel teleco communicating uh, provider for you. Because uh, when you call, we're actually going to understand exactly what you're going to need to do to help you troubleshoot and bring your devices online. You're not going to be dealing with somebody that maybe has very little expertise or knowledge about IoT devices. So if you can kind of cover a little bit of that, that would be really useful, I think. Um, yes, yeah, so the uh, first thing uh, of support is getting the device online. So we have uh, both myself uh, and also my colleagues who've seen the typical issues. So uh, seeing when the device is uh, not creating PDP context, helping you figure it out. We can uh, run traces to see is the data sending uh, information to a private IP address or a public IP address. Um, we, if there are discrepancies between how much data the device says it's sending versus what we see, um, that's also really helpful. Um, for our enterprise customers as well, uh, we can take over tasks like uh, putting devices into factory test mode. Um, our uh, customer success management team are more than happy to talk to you about tariff profiles, how to change them, how to update them. Um, this, yeah, it's uh, it's it's quite quite important, and also that that thing earlier that I said about when a network is down in a random country of the world. Imagine you're getting calls from people who are pissed off at you in Mexico because something's not working. Uh, quick response: uh, A, no hearing from us. There's an issue. B, what we're doing, and C, uh, when it's fixed, because we're an operator and we're talking to these operators on a peer-to-peer -peer level. Uh, so we're actually opening tickets directly with them rather than, you know, going from A to B to C. Um, you know, it's more effective when you talk directly. Yeah, and I will add this because he just made an excellent point and I really want to clarify this because this deserves to be, you know, said a little bit louder for people in the back. You get to take advantage of the existing network infrastructure locally. So if, let's say, Mexico, you could do still sell, you can use different operators like AT&T. The benefit is you get to use that, but you get the coverage and the support that you'd really need when you're talking about IoT applications because having that stuff online or having somebody that can actually walk you through or the tools to help you fill the gap because you may not have the expertise on hand is super valuable. That's one of the biggest things that we bring to the table as a cloud integrated uh, telco provider. But to you also, because everything in the future is moving to the cloud, because all of your platforms, because everything that you're doing moving forward with IoT is cloud related, having somebody that can help you communicate and bridge that gap is gonna be really critical because that offers a full solution to the market. So that's a full turnkey solution, your software, your hardware, and now the backbone, which is critical for the communications. There was one question, my friend, from Juan Arenas. He's asking if this platform is available in Spanish. We actually didn't talk about uh, languages that are available as well. Absolutely, I can uh, go right here and let's switch to Espanol. Look at that. I have Juan. no idea what's happening. <laughs> 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 
There Thank you that. go. Uh, this is also where you find the uh, two-factor authentication. Mm -hmm. Right, OK. <laughs> yeah, this is perfect. Absolutely. And uh, uh, my colleagues, they speak Spanish, Portuguese, Greek, French. What languages have you, can you speak yourself, David? Uh, I can speak Spanish and English. Uh, yeah. Unfortunately, I've forgotten all my Irish. <laughs> And then uh, the last thing I think before we, we leave, my friend, I want to also kind of highlight the fact that a lot of this stuff that we have that you've walked everybody through, that's super useful for them to be able to manage their devices. This portal is also available for people to use for their own applications. They can actually integrate all of this into their existing platforms. Is that is that true? Uh, yeah, a lot of people uh, create a platform that's customer facing. And they pull out things like uh, connectivity data or usage data, and they show it then uh, per customer on their side. Excellent. So all the I stuff that we've forgotten did, the uh, the poll as well that we said that we would ah, do. That's right. So I must uh, do a little here, and now I will launch the poll. There but you go. can continue talking as well. Yeah, fantastic. So uh, everybody, thank you for joining us. If you if you stuck along all the way to the very end. Uh, Juan, thank you for the questions. Thank you for uh, all of the, uh, for Soeul Sobrati. Thank you again for the question as well. Uh, this is some possible topics that we want to cover, cover, I'm sorry, for the coming weeks and months. So we want to talk about possibly no-code integrations, uh, maybe transit gateway or IPsec or maybe OpenVPN, understanding exactly how connectivity with the cloud infrastructure and also being able to access your devices remotely, what we do to offer you that, that uh, availability and how easy it can be for you, as well as data streamer, maybe factory test mode, maybe that was interesting to you, maybe you're an OEM and you'd like to learn how you can take advantage of that during your production and your development stages. Uh, and also, if you're interested in IoT security, that's a very big issue that a lot of people are struggling with. IoT is definitely becoming a big target and it's definitely in the news a lot. So if that's something that you may feel you wanna learn more about or you want us to do a deeper dive and give you use cases and just uh, helpful tips on on some guides on how you can secure your devices. You know, feel free to let us know. Your feedback is very much appreciated. Thanks again for joining us today. Um, we'll go ahead and leave this open for a few more minutes. Is there anything else you'd like to say before we close, Mr. Joseph? I like to say it's neck and neck between Transit Gateway and IoT security, Ooh, <laughs> uh, VPNs yes. and security, and they're wow. actually uh, related, which is uh, it makes sense. Look at that. That is awesome. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So I'll give it maybe uh, 20 seconds more, and then we can uh, wrap it up. Um, thanks to everybody for your uh, attention, and I hope it, well, I didn't talk too much. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was perfect. It was very, very good. Very informative, my brother. Thank you very much for your time. Appreciate it. Yeah, and I look forward to doing another webinar soon. We can uh, repeat this. Uh, it'd be even nicer to talk in person. I like more interaction. So I do that's, too. Uh, yeah, it's more personal. I get to, to really understand what it is you're trying to do or try to fix or yeah, what adds value. Exactly. Wholeheartedly agree. I think we can close the poll now. Looks like everybody's yeah. done. So uh, let me close the poll. There we go. And now uh, I can share the uh, poll. <laughs> so actually, there are the <laughs> results. Uh, for <laughs> We have a clear winner. <laughs> Absolutely, security indeed. And then uh, neck and neck. So uh, with that, I want to thank everybody for their attention, for your questions. David, thank you for your support. Absolutely. And I look forward to doing this again soon. Have a wonderful rest of your day, everybody. Thank you for joining us.